Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Continuing with Surat Al Amran, we are on ayah number one hundred and thirteen. Qala Allah Taala, "Laysu sawaa min ahli al kitabi ummatun qaimatun yatluna ayati Allah ana al layli." وَهُمْ يَسْجُدُونَ After Allah Jalla wa'ala speaks about the Ahlul Kitab and that how most of them are rebellious and evildoers, he somewhat balances the scales out. He says not all of them are evil and rebellious against Allah Jalla wa'ala. Rather, there are some from the Christian community and the Jewish community who do have a humble heart and who will see the truth for what it is. So he says that from the Ahlul Kitab there is an Ummah, meaning there is a community or a group. Qa'imatun. Qa'ima normally means standing up. Here it means they are upright on the order of Allah Jalla wa'ala, obeying Allah. Yatluna. It means to recite. It can also mean to follow. Ayatillahi. The ayat of Allah meaning the Quran. So they are reciting and following. We can accept both tafasir because they are not contradictory. They are complementary. He says, so they are reciting the Quran. Ana al-layli. This ana means throughout or long hours in the layl, night. Wahum yasjudun. This could be a hal, meaning to say they are reciting the ayat of Allah, which of course refers to the Quran. Whilst they are yasjudun, now yasjudun means prostrating, but here it would mean whilst they are praying, as in tahajjud, because throughout the night, this is the time for the nighttime prayer. It's not just merely making the sajda. This is not an act of ibadah in the night. The night ibadah is the nighttime prayer, salatul layl, or you can say qiyamul layl, or tahajjud. Abdullah ibn Abbas says that this ayah came down when Abdullah ibn Salam and some of his companions embraced Islam from Judaism. The Yahud said that only the worst of us are going to embrace Islam and leave the deen of our fathers. He says in response to that, this ayah came down. Ayah 114 follows on. Yu'minuna billahi wal yawmi الآخر ويأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويسارعون في الخيرات وأولئك من الصالحين. So he says they have iman in Allah. This means to say in His rububiya, uluhiya, and asma wa sifat. And in the al yawm al-akhir, that's the yawm al-qiyamah. Note here that when he says having iman in Allah, this would mean having iman that the Quran is also the truth from Allah and that Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Qurashi alayhi salatu wasalam is indeed the true final servant and messenger of Allah. Because without that, you do not have iman in Allah as far as Allah is concerned. So we do not accept that in the technical sense that the Jews and Christians have Iman in Allah. You cannot have Iman in Allah unless you also have Iman in His Book and Messenger. You are either all in or you are either all out. And he says that these people, meaning those who have embraced the Deen of Al-Islam from the Ahlul Kitab, they enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Meaning to say they do not fear anyone or rebuke from anyone. So they will order people to embrace Islam, to do that which is good. They will forbid people from concealing the description of the Prophet in their scriptures of the Torah or Injil or Zabur. وَيُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ From سَارَعَ يُسَارِعُ From سُرَعَ Meaning speed. They hasten في الْخَيْرَاتِ In doing the khairat, the righteous deeds. وَأُولَٰئِكَ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And they are from the righteous. Continuing on, 115. وَمَا يَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ 
فلن يك فروه والله عليم بالمتقين and he says وما يفعلوا whatever they do من خير from goodness meaning of righteous actions فلن the فا comes with the شرط the condition is whatever they do so the فا in front of the لن is due to the شرط the condition he says they will not be يكفروه the word كفر comes from the word كفرة which is a covering on the fruits of the date palm tree the fruits come out of this كفرة it covers the fruits and so كفر means to cover and then from there it leads on to mean being ungrateful because an ingrate covers the favors that were done to him and that is what a kafir is and it's also come on to mean to reject something because a kafir rejects Allah Jalla wa ala. in the context of this ayah فَلَنْ يُكْفَرُوهُ means they will not be deprived of it of it meaning the reward of the righteous deeds that they're doing and this ayah came down in response to some of the Yahud saying about Abdullah ibn Salam and some other Yahud who embraced Islam they said that all these righteous deeds that these people meaning Abdullah ibn Salam are doing will go to waste and so Allah Jalla wa ala is telling them no it will not go to waste they will not be deprived of any goodness that they will do and then he says that Allah knows the muttaqin meaning to say not just knows them but will reward them for their actions so it's in fact a good news okay so we have these three ayat what can we pick up from them we immediately pick up the justice of Allah Jalla wa ala. he does not paint everyone with the same brush if there are those who deserve credit, he will give them credit. We also pick up that from the Ahlul Kitab will be those who will not be so proud to reject Islam. Rather, they will embrace. And such people should be appreciated. In the authentic hadith in the Sahih, the Prophet ﷺ told us that such people will have a double fold reward one for believing in their prophets of their scriptures and the second reward for believing in the last prophet. We also take the virtue of reciting the ayat of Allah during the night, so that would be tahajjud, whilst you are yasjudun, meaning praying. So again, this is qiyamul layl, the virtue of that, because Allah gives it a special mention. So we should try to make a plan to regularly pray tahajjud. If not every night, then at least some nights every week whatever is in your capability. Similarly, we take the virtue of having Iman in Allah and the Yawmul Akhir and also enjoying the good and forbidding the evil and not fearing other people in that and being patient. And that these are some of the characteristics of the Salihin, the righteous people, as the ayah mentions. We find the virtue of hastening to do righteous deeds. So that is to say, do not be lazy. Do not say, I will do it tomorrow or next week or some other time. Nowadays, too many people are lazy to perform the Hajj and the Umrah because it takes too much effort to travel out there. So they say, I will do it next year or maybe I will do it when I'm married. Some sort of honeymoon Hajj. And this is all whispers of Shaytan. Shaytan wants you to procrastinate. Rather, Allah Jalla wa ala mentions, and there are other such ayat as well telling us to hasten to do righteous actions. So live life with a sense of urgency. And after all, you do not know when you will breathe your last. We pick up the vital lesson that no righteous deed will go to waste. Now even though this ayah is speaking about those people of the Ahlul Kitab who embraced Islam, the word the general. So it applies to all people. From the Muslimin who work righteousness, their deeds will not go to waste. That they will be fully rewarded for it. We also learn that Allah is fully aware of who the muttaqin are and that he will reward them accordingly. And that knowledge we may take as well is from the attributes of Allah Jalla wa ala. It is a sifa vatiya. It always remains with Allah Jalla wa ala. Hada wallahu a'lam.